All right, time for our fiscal focus segment, as always, sponsored by InfoChoice, your choice of information on Australian consumer finance. Now, investing is a pretty key part to building wealth over time and achieving financial independence. And one particular type of investment, which has experienced a surge in popularity in recent years, particularly among young Australians, is exchange traded funds or ETFs. Joining us to discuss is Jessica Lung. Portfolio Manager from Global X ETFs. Jessica, welcome to the Savings Tip Jar. Hi, thanks for having me. It's such a pleasure to be here. Thanks for joining us, Jess. So just the first question, um, for those who are not in the know, um, what exactly is an ETF um, and how do they and how are they different from uh, traditional share trading? Um, and how do they offer, like, like what benefits do they have compared mm -hmm. to uh, just picking a, a, an individual stock? Sure. So an ETF stands for Exchange Traded Funds, and essentially it's a basket of securities which aims to mimic or replicate the uh, performance of its un of an underlying security. So that was probably a whole bunch of words, but let me give you another analogy which might be easier to understand. So what I like to say ETFs are is they're kind of like your party mix of securities. So sometimes you want access, you know, you want to have an apple, you want to have a banana, you want to have um, a carrot, but then you don't want to go and buy out individually. So what an ETF does is it just packages all nicely so that in the one package or in the one ETF, you get access to all of the above. So diversification. So some of the most common ETFs that we have out there or um, track broad market cap weighted indices. So some of them include the largest 100 names listed on the NASDAQ stock exchange, or even just some of the largest names on the ASX, for example. So just why this recent surge in popularity in ETFs? Like why are so many more people investing in them over say, you know, maybe similar types of investments like managed funds or listed investment companies? Mm, so we've really seen the rise of ETFs essentially since COVID with the rise of retail investors. But what I think is a key attribute and why I personally like ETFs so much is that I think it's really democratized investing and it allows people from all walks of life to start their investing journey um, for long-term wealth. So like you mentioned, why ETFs over managed funds? So I think the main reason for that is that ETFs have really removed most of the barriers to entry when it comes to investing by managed funds. So back in the day, managed funds, you probably had, or you probably needed $10,000, $20,000 just to start investing. And that was by just the one managed fund or the one strategy. While now, you know, with the introduction of new technology and, and even micro investing apps, it's really allowed investors to start even with $50 or $500. So Jess, can you explain what the benefits are of an ETF structure? Sure. So other than going back to my party mix analogy, where I assume everyone likes sweets, um, there's actually a lot of advantages to the ETF structure. So namely diversification, cost effectiveness, ease of access and transparency. So going back to the first one, diversification. So going back to the party mix analogy, where in that one single trade, you get access to a whole bunch of different securities. So you don't have to go out and individually source them. The second one, cost effectiveness. So the management fee that you pay and including your brokerage just on the one trade for an ETF tends to be cheaper than, for example, going back to the 100 largest stocks listed on the NASDAQ is going to be cheaper than you physically going out to the NASDAQ and buying 100 stocks. Um, Ease of access. So by the ETF structure is just the one ETF. So you'll trade it like any other share and then you can trade it anytime during the market is open. And then as opposed to managed funds where usually is you have to fill in a form, probably you just have to physically fill it in, scan it and send it for them to just give you the one price at the end of the day. Uh, and lastly, transparency. So a lot of passive ETF providers will actually list um, all their holdings on their website that's updated very regularly. So ours are updated on our website every single day. So you know exactly what you're investing into. I guess one thing about about that with the party mix of of stocks is um, rather than you know investing in one particular company in one particular industry that you like, mm -hmm. you can invest in the entire industry that you like. Say you're, you're really into... Um, you know, agriculture. I, I think there's an ETF called Food. I think you know, the, oh. the ticker name is actually Food, and it's a basket of um, farming agribusiness um, companies. And then there's, you know, you can invest in health. So it's a, a whole package of, you know, healthcare related businesses. So I guess the question for this one, Jess, is, you know, how can investors potentially stand to benefit by, by leveraging these uh, structural mega trends, I, I guess you could call them, via thematic 
ETFs? Sure. Yeah. So I think you've touched on a really great point is that kind of historically, maybe investors have been burnt because they've kind of put all their eggs in one basket. So like all their eggs in one name and that's maybe done really uh, poorly or they've done um, penny stocks or just kind of chased uh, the it stock at the moment. So that really goes back to the point of diversification. So one of the key advantages of an ETF is that it gives you access to a whole bunch of securities. So instead of essentially maybe in the past, you're looking for the needle in the haystack, you now you know that the haystack is going to do well because it's a structural t- um, tailwind, you know, it's a strong thematic, then you just buy the whole uh, whole haystack. And then, you know, eventually over time, if uh, given your longer term time horizon, that the theme should outperform and give you good performance. Dom mentioned a couple of uh, sort of funny sounding ETFs there uh, yeah, around food and and whatnot. Um, and, and one of the ways I've noticed that people in recent years have gotten into share trading is through a bit of novelty, a bit of fun. Um, you, you know, one one uh, ETF that I've noticed out there focuses on stuff that's bad for you. So they invest in uh, nice. <laughs> in, in weapons, uh, junk food, alcohol, tobacco, right. and so on. Uh, so what sort of uh, more fun sort of asset classes or ETFs does uh, Global X offer or what what ones have you seen out there? Yeah, so I guess our DNA is uh, beyond ordinary and we really believe in innovation and kind of even going back to the question Dom asked before is how can you really stand to benefit from these structural tailwinds? So we really believe that, you know, what these structural megatrends look like and that they're shaping the way we live and what the future looks like is in growth. And some of the main themes that we see, um, and yeah, there's no denying it, is AI. So AI is becoming very mainstream. I'm sure some of us or yeah, have used chat GBT very recently. So you can get exposure to, you know, the key names in this area, namely your FANG stocks. So your Meta, uh, Microsoft and Google via our Global X FANG Plus ETF. So the ticker is uh, F-A-N-G. So you get access to those names and more, including NVIDIA, which is equated. Uh, another thing, which I think is kind of related on that tech note, but different, but still very, very relatable is cybersecurity. So I'm sure we've all kind of been hacked or the Optus hack, Medicare hack, no, sorry, Medibank, uh, Medibank hack. Um, so very prevalent. And just the number of spam calls that I'm getting every day is kind of a bit ridiculous. <laughs> so to to kind of target that, or if you want to leverage up that and, and experience the growth that's going to be put in with all the investment that's putting into this area, we have a cybersecurity ETF. So that one is the Global X Cybersecurity ETF, and the ticker is BUGG. BUGG, bug. Yeah, bug. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I guess with you know the all the rise in uh, AI companies and 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 you know robot technologies, there's got to be an ETF out there, surely called called Robo, that allows you to invest in the lows. We actually do. So we actually have an ETF called Robo. So the ticker is R O B O, and that's a global <laughs> X robotics and automation ETF. So yes, that one uh, invests in robotics, and uh, of course we are spending time and resources to looking at how best we can capture the broader AI theme as well. Yeah, awesome. Uh, and I guess you know, on a slightly different note, um, perhaps one thing you're missing out with uh, with ETFs is that. Um, <clears throat> That sort of active management, you know, because an ETF tends to track a stock index. You don't have someone that's strategically, you know, picking companies that um, will will you know drive up the the value of the fund. Um, but then I guess that person needs to be paid a salary, so it tends to cost a fair bit more, which is I guess maybe why ETFs are a bit more cost efficient than managed funds. But do you think um, you know investors are missing out on much by by opting for a more passively managed fund via an ETF instead of a actively managed uh, managed fund? Not necessarily. So I like that Tarko's ad, you know, like why not both? And I think it's the core satellite strategy where you can really incorporate the benefits of both uh, to build a well-rounded portfolio that meets your uh, personal risk tolerance and especially investment goals. So this um, uh, approach that I'm talking about is the core satellite approach. So kind of think about it as a planet, which is your core. So that means the majority of your portfolio will be held in a broad market cap or passive index tracking ETFs, like you mentioned, which tend to be lower costs. And also because they track a broader index, it means there's less trading and underlying or turnover. And that tends to lead to better tax efficiency outcomes as well. 
Uh, so you have the majority, which is your core in lower index tracking uh, ETFs, and then as a satellite. So um, that's where you can be a bit more strategic about your positions. So you can do uh, actively managed fund, or you can do a thematic ETF or other um, exposures that you want as well. Just off that, we'll talk about uh, the sort of 2024 outlook, how it's shaping up, how it's looking uh, for this year. Um, how might any sort of geopolitical events uh, sort of shape people's investment strategies uh, this year? Yeah, so I think just even on the landscape, especially this year and the last two years, it's just a lot of uncertainty. So anything, everything that we're going through now, so interest rates, geo, geopolitics, it all it just leads to uncertainty. But that's why I think it really comes back to what is your long-term investment approach? What is your investment goals? And yes, we are experiencing, you know, some volatility here and potentially uh, you might want to take advantage of this, but then you can maybe position those in your satellite positions. So taking up smaller positions in your overall portfolio, but uh, that's why the core satellite approach is still better in the sense that it will help you achieve your long-term investment goals. Yeah, certainly sounds like a pretty good balance. And I guess, you know, you can't really get have gains without having a bit of risk involved too. So there's always stuff like that to consider, uh, to look out for uh, throughout the year. That is 2024. So uh, Jessica, really appreciate your insights. Thanks so much for joining us on the Savings Tip Chat podcast. Thanks for having me. It's been great fun. Perfect. Thank you. 